Okay. Good Ladies and gentlemen, let me call this meeting to order. For those of you that have never been here, let me explain how we operate. This is the October meeting for the Lowndes County Ballot Office Only Board of Appeals. I will call each case by case number and case name. Someone from staff will come to the lectern, give us the request and the meat of the data that we need to take in. Once they have completed the presentation, there will probably be questions or discussions among the board members and back and forth to staff to make sure we understand it. Once we are confident with that, I will ask if there is anyone here, applicant or somebody representing the applicant perhaps, that would like to come to the lectern and give us any additional information you would like for us to take under advisement. If you choose to come to the lectern, please give us your name and address for the record so we'll have it in the minutes. Once you have given us the information that you feel like is pertinent, there will probably be discussions or questions. Once we're satisfied, we have heard that part of it. And if there are multiple people that wish to speak in behalf of it, we ask that if, if it's something that has not been brought to our attention, please come to the lectern, give us your name and address, give us the information. If the information you have has already been presented, please don't string us out by giving us the same thing again. Once we're satisfied, we have heard the request and the pro side, and I will ask if there are any persons here in opposition or if there are any persons here that have questions about what is being requested. Again, if there are concerns or opposition, please come to the lectern, give us your name and address for the record, give us the information you'd like for us to take under advice. Once we have heard from both sides, we will generally render a decision here today. However, it is within the bylaws, if we feel like parties need to talk or information may be lacking, we can postpone acting on it until the next regularly scheduled meeting, which will be in November. And I forgot to turn this thing. I am sorry. <laughs> Where does it say the chairman shall turn his microphone on? Yes, something like that. But that's all right. She knows what I say every time. Okay, first case we're going to call is Lowndes County case. VAR 2015-13, William Grondel, 6553 Lakes Industrial Boulevard, Lake Park, Georgia. It is your show, Carmella. Hello, everyone. Hope everyone has been joining us fall weather. Our first case before you is a county case. Um, it's a case by Electrical Test Labs in Georgia. They're proposing a, an addition to their existing facilities. Subject property is located in the Lake Park Industrial Area. I'm not sure what's going on with the slide there. Um, but as you can see, it's surrounded by industrial um, zone property, and the applicants are proposing a, an addition to their existing facility. The addition is going to be to the rear of the building. And as you can see from your staff reports, the addition encroaches upon the side yard as well as the rear yard setback. Um, just a note, the rear yard setback, they are encroaching 10 feet. And they, instead of coming before you all for variance, they're going to go the admin waiver route where, where a staff can grant an administrative waiver as long as it's more than 20%. But for the sake of this board, um, they're requesting a variance to that secondary side yard setback, which is around that cul-de-sac area. The requirement um, has changed quite a bit from the original construction of the building. The building was constructed in 2004. The setbacks have changed from that time. There's about a 20-foot difference. Um, but the requirement is 56 feet from the property line, and the addition is proposed to be about 20 feet from the property line. So they're asking for a 36 foot variance. Staff looked at this request and just looked at the existing uses around the subject property, the Home Depot, and didn't feel that the encroachment would be a, a detriment to adjacent property, and we recommended approval, set, citing criteria D. 
anyone have questions or anything to discuss at this time? Two questions. There's no problem with the new building and that drainage easement. I noticed there was a drainage easement yes. that won't have any effect on that. No, as a matter of fact, um, we did measure because there's a, quite a bit of drop and there's about 50 foot difference between where the existing building is and where the drop. We're guessing that with the addition, there's probably going to be about 10 foot distance before you get that drop with this new addition. Okay, my second question. Um, if they were building this addition based on the previous requirements, before there was a change. Would they follow would they follow within the allotted there would be some encroachment. Um, however that encroachment we would have been able to handle with an administrative way. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you Carmel. Is there anyone here that would like to give us any information or represent? My name is Stan Kratz. I'm with the Boston Lowndes County Development Authority. I'm here on behalf of uh, William and Linda Grondel. Um, they had a conference today. So, uh, just on behalf of the Development Authority, this is in our industrial park in Lake Park, and uh, we just ask that you, you um, approve this because uh, it's going to benefit the future expansion of this company. Stuart Irby actually just bought out electrical test labs, and they're a big distributor of electrical uh, and utility supplies. So, uh, this will help um, with their future expansion. Yeah, we, we have the letter, we'll make a part of the news. And that's all I have to think. Any questions? Hang on a minute. Hang on. Any questions for him? Okay, thank you very much. Any other discussion or questions? Anything we need to talk about before I call the question? Can I get a motion on this request? A motion would approve the variance signing criteria D. I have a motion on the table from Mr. McCall to grant the request as presented signing criteria D. Do I have a second? I have a second from Ms. Hobby. Uh, all in favor, raise a hand. Unanimous, good luck with it. Hope everything works out. Thank you. Okay. The next case we will call is the City of Alabama case, application 2015-06, to Caleb, Georgia Court, Taco Bell, at 1199 North St. Augustine Road. We have a new moderator, our new MC. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. It is your show, Tracy. Thank you, Chairman. We have a variance request from Mr. Mike Gray on behalf of Taco Bell on the corner of St. Augustine and Gornto. The property is zoned highly commercial and is about three quarters of an acre large. There is a current Taco Bell restaurant with drive-thru existing. They intend to demolish the existing Taco Bell and rebuild with a new Taco Bell. Since they are demolishing and rebuilding, then all bets are off, figuratively speaking, they have to comply with current codes. After reviewing site plans, building facades, we found some minor variances that needed to be considered for the plans to be approved. Subject property, existing public mill. Jason property, commercial area, you've got a strip mall, you've got some restaurants, you've got gas stations. Um, three variances involved. First revol revolves around drive through stacking spaces. There is a requirement for a single lane quarter board, um, like you see at most Taco Bells, a lot of fast food restaurants, of uh, six spaces from the place where you place your order back. In other words, so as not to impede traffic, not to impede the circulation flow of people back and out. Maybe you don't want to go through the drive through you want to get around the drive through Anyway, six second spaces from a place where you place your order back. This is a little bit different in the sense that they have eight from the place where you pick up your order back, not from the order board back, if that makes sense. They do meet the intent of the ordinance, and staff recommends approval on that variance. The 
second variance that they are asking for relates to the number of parking spaces. As a fast food restaurant with a drive-through um, lane, they're required to have 14 spaces per 1,000 square feet of rest floor area. The building is about 2,330 square feet, which would require a minimum of 33 parking spaces. They are proposing 29, which is for short. Staff understands that it is a quarter lot. We also understand that the, there are setbacks and limited building area on this particular parcel. So we will recommend approval for that particular variance. The last variance relates to the facade. This property is within the Bay Tree University Commercial Corridor, which is one of three overlays in the city. The Bay Tree overlay, the inner perimeter overlay, and the urban commercial corridor overlay, which covers most of the main routes in the city. Um, St. Augustine, Bay Tree, Norman, Ashley, Patterson, North Oak Street. That kind of help improve the maneuverability and the appearances of our city. One of those requirements in the bakery overlay is a pronounced or covered entry. In other words, a cover of some sort to shelter the patrons as they walk in from outside, either from rain, sunlight, things of that nature. Staff wants the goal of these overlays is to also steer away from corporate architecture, um, something a little bit unique, something that says all lost. After reviewing this, this particular variance, we couldn't find any hardship. So this is the only section, segment, that we recommend tonight. So drive through stacking spaces, that variance, the variance for the number of parking spaces, we recommend approval. The pronounced entry or the covered entry, staff recommends tonight. Any questions? Ms. Hoffman. Is there a reason why we couldn't have covered entry? I will let the applicant answer that. There have been several of us involved in review. Um, I have not heard firsthand why Taco Bell is not provided, or is not linked by a covered entry. Does covered entry also include something like an awning? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And does this just cover entry or covers um, pickup window area too? Just the entries and exits. Doorways. Can you enlighten the board to what, if any, requirements or regulations as to size or type, or is it just some kind of cover? Some kind of cover. So there's nothing in there that says it must be so many feet or so high or so low or any kind of construction. No. Right. Does the Taco Bell actually have this? Yes, ma'am. The one that was recently built mm -hmm. in the past year. Yes, ma'am. Will the denial of this variance impede progress of the plans to complete to further from, from discussion? Staff, from staff's point of view, no. no. But again, that's from staff's yeah. point of view. Well, and that may be a question you want to ask again when we have somebody to talk about it. Okay. Any other questions? Any other discussions? Thank you very much, Tracy. Is there anyone here from Taco Bell or representing Taco Bell that would like to give us some enlightenment? I do. Mike Perry, Birmingham, Alabama, Taco Bell. Um, if we'll, we'll work backwards, I guess, number three first, since that's where the question for. When the new Taco Bell design came out, what happened is they kind of took away our ability to put the pronounced canopies because of the way that the, there's a slat system, it's an aluminum slat system that goes on the outside. What happened is we, we used to have a, a canopy that was eight foot three inches deep and hang out from the building. What happened when we went to this new architecture, those canopies started sagging because the support system wasn't in place to be able to uh, keep that from voting out. So we went back to a smaller canopy. Uh, since we've been talking and, and through Tracy and the rest of the staff, I think there's a way that we can make it happen. And it, it takes a little bit of re-engineering and hiding some cables back up behind the slats to make it happen. But hey, if I get two out of three variances, I'll figure out a way to get the third. So, you know, it's really, it, it's what we're trying to do to, one, we kind of have our hands tied a little bit through corporate, what their architectural standards are. <coughs> so it takes us a, a little bit of a unique, you know, I, 
application to that process to get the you know, and, and we've had good success with our shorter awnings, but again, we can figure out a way to get the, the, the larger awnings. And, and your question about drive-through and those kind of things, those aren't really affected. It's still got the pronounced awnings of that. You know, our business is making customers happy, so that's what we're trying to do with the awnings over the drive-through and over the menu. I believe my question was asked if there, there are options out there if this prayers are denied by this board. So I'll have that question. Any other questions? Any other discussion from the board at this time? Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else here who would like to speak on behalf of Taco Bell? Is there anyone here in opposition to what is being requested, or is there anyone here that has questions about what is being requested? Okay, I think we've heard it. Any other questions, any other discussions before I call the question? Can I get a motion? Let me ask you a question about how we're going to proceed. Uh, do we lock them all together, or do we have to have an addition? Uh, well, it's up to the board's prerogative. I really don't see a problem with lumping all three together, how you want to do it. If you feel more comfortable doing it one at a time, we'll do it one at a time. Yeah, yeah if, if that should be what is requested, then the motion would be something to the tune of I make a motion that we grant the variance for item one per staff recommendation, grant the variance item two per staff recommendation, deny request three per staff recommendation, citing whatever. And any problems with doing all three or you want to break them up? It's a problem. Can I get a motion on the request? I make a motion that we do just what you said. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have a motion from Ms. Portman to, <coughs> to recommend item one, the stacking spaces as presented from the staff, approval of variance number two, the reduction in parking spaces, citing uh, presentation by Staff, I'm sorry, not citing. Denial of variance three, which would be the uh, canopy for entrance and exit. Citing staff, staff, staff report. Okay, for staff report. All right, do I have a second? I second that. I have a second on the board. Uh, all in favor, raise your hand. Unanimous, thank you very much. Tracy, I didn't put his name in there. I'm sorry. We need to. A second. Okay, Mr. Hogan was yeah. a second. Oh. I didn't say that. I'm sorry. I'll have that. That's fine. Got that. Okay, next case we'll call is application 2015 07, Stowley Ace Properties LLC 4387. Enter Perimeter Road. You have a show again. Thank you. This particular variance request is from Stalby Hayes Properties, particularly for a property on the inner perimeter, um, 4387 inner perimeter, where Ace Electric, the electrical contractors are. Um, it is on Highway Commercial and consists of the electrical contractors on a piece of property that's a little bit over five acres, roughly five and a quarter. Um, the applicant is anticipating building about a 15,000 square foot warehousing type building in the rear of their property. The reason this is in front of you is twofold. The applicant is proposing a metal building, storage warehousing. We have two regulations that prohibit metal sites on the side that face the front yard. First is in the LDR, um, in the zoning portion, it requires everything that is commercially zoned, whether it's neighborhood commercial, whether it's community commercial, whether it's highway commercial, to be decided if it's a metal building with 
brick stucco glass, things of that nature, basically to prevent a, an industrial type look in our commercial corridors. Now, if this property was in a manufacturing area, we wouldn't be here. But again, we're here because it's in a commercial area. Second being, they are also in the inner perimeter corridor overlay. Similar to the case that we heard before, this one's in the inner perimeter overlay, which requires some facading, um, brick, stone, and again, to help improve, some, improve the aesthetics of our commercial corridors. After reviewing the case, we realize that the property is long. We realize that there's some landscaping towards the front of this property. Evergreens, trees, shrubs, things of that nature. We also realize that the warehouse as shown is sitting about 400 feet from the front property line, which is a good distance away. Being that it's sitting a good distance away, about 400 feet, and given that it is sitting towards the back of the property and is will be facaded somewhat by the, by the existing greenery up front landscaping, it does meet the intent of the ordinance, which is to not have a warehousey um, manufacturing type look down our commercial corridors. So, given that, we're recommending approval of this particular various request with two conditions. Number one, that's a, that it's based on the building sizes and locations as shown on your site plans. Um, the second one, approving, approval with the existing evergreen trees and landscaping across the front of the property, but that's maintained for a distance of at least 125 feet from the front property. Any questions? Why weren't there two or three trees marked out there? That I didn't know. I didn't notice when I did my site plan. Any other questions, any discussions at this time? Is anyone here in support of this application? Yes, sir. Is there anything you would like to give information-wise? Yes, sir. First of all, I'd like to thank y'all for serving on this board. You know, it's a, a lot of effort and trouble, but it does help the community. My name is Glenn Gregory. I'm at 3226 Silence Road. I'm an architect here and I'm representing the A Selector. Um, I didn't quite understand all of uh, Tracy's two stipulations. Can you okay. reiterate that for me? Tracy, do you want to do it? Or you want me to try to tell them? Either way, whatever makes you Well, why don't okay. you do it? The first? I'll pass these around. And, uh, these are pictures of the existing facility. Well, tell them again, Tracy. Staff recommends that if Zoning Board of Appeals is going to approve this variance, yeah. that the building be located about in the general area where it's at on your submitted site plan. Right. And then number two, that the existing greenery and trees, evergreen shrubs at the front not be disturbed by 135 feet back in the front property. Okay. okay. Did that answer that? Point? Yes, sir, it did, and there won't be any problem complying with that. Uh, the only trees we're disturbing is the ones we have to cut to get the building in there. Right. And when I went out there today, there were some trees up front that were um, tagged. It's a large tape. Do you know why they're? Well, it's been a landscape inventory down out there, and uh, up front trees tagged with yellow tape. Is it orange tape? It's orange. Because Bobby, if they're required, you know why they'd be tagged? Tom? I do. They're tagged because the power company is wanting to move the power line a little bit. And there's two trees. One of them is a partially dead tree, and the other one leans out over the east. And uh, they were wanting to take those two trees out. So they're going to move the lines closer to, towards your building? Yes. That's, that's one of the well, I mean, with their contingency on approval and seeing marked trees, they yeah. generally yeah. indicate you're fixing to. But it's, not, it's not as good as the trees. Okay. And, and of course, they're recommending approval. So, uh, if you look at those pictures, it's, it's even pretty easy to make the case that we have an existing building built in 1997. It has metal siding 
within 100 feet of perimeter. This building is going back over 350. And so just from an architectural uh, theme or motif alone, it behooves us to use metal siding similar to the metal siding on the existing building. And of course we have some architectural shape to it. This existing building has an opposing shed roof design and we too have an opposing shed roof design. So it's not just a uh, you know, square ended metal building. And uh, there's been thought given to the color, how it would be compatible with the existing building. Uh, and if you look at these photographs, uh, you can see there's a lot of vegetation a lot of trees, existing trees, mature trees that will remain in place. And you won't even notice this building. You just, just won't notice it. I mean, it's, it's on the back of the lot. And uh, we feel like it's just... Now, what, what will happen is uh, there will be uh, some masonry used on the front of this building on the office part. So we mix the metal siding on the warehouse part with a split face block on the office part. And they, they come together and um, make some nice... Yeah, that's... Yeah, I was in here. I was going to ask that question because based on what we have in the packet, yeah. based on where the building is, the majority of the building is actually behind or going to be behind the existing building, so you're really not going to see it. That's right. But the part that sticks out and potentially may be visible from the street, at least in here, is drawn that you're going to have some kind of facade right. on that part. So. Yeah, this, this facade right, right here, uh, of course, is the front of the office. Right. And everybody's got it in their package. And in the dark colored in area is the metal siding similar to the existing building. It's just, it's not. It's, an, it's a situation that probably the law just hey, probably the law just couldn't cover. You know, it's one of those areas that you you don't try to cover it with a law, and you, the best thing for us to do is come ask for a variance. And that keeps our job secure. That's right. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Any discussions for Mr. Gregory? Thank you, Glenn. You will. Thank you. Is there anything else that you'd like to? Hey, Bobby. He covered it. Okay. Is there anyone here in opposition to this? Is there anyone have a concern or question about what's being requested? Any other discussions before we call the question on this issue? Can I get a motion on this request? It's Chairman Off. A motion granted approved subject to the two conditions recommended by the staff site staff's report. We have a motion from Dr. Housel to accept the variance as presented according to staff with the recommendation recommendations for the uh, site plan to be made a part of the minutes and that would be approximately where the building is and that the existing trees would not be disturbed, shrubs would not, would be, would not be disturbed. Yes, Mr. Mark? Also to make it perfectly clear, it's in the written record, but that's for the existing building and the new building. Okay. It's it's the existing building and the new building. It's been said by Scott. Amended for both buildings then. I have motion. Do I have a second? I second. I have a second. Oh. All in favor, raise your hand, please. Unanimous. Good luck with it. Tom, y'all make it look good. Hope it works out like you need. Thank y'all for your help. Thank you. Okay. Now, we are done with the meat of the business. We have approval of the minutes. I read them. Did you see anything? Did I miss something? Yes. I missed something. I was paying her. Would you please? I <laughs> I did not pay attention to who was here and who was not. I read it. I it was a split person. Okay. 
Can I get a motion to accept the minutes with the correction? I make a motion that we accept the minutes from last evening. I have motions from Ms. Tyler. Do I have a second? Second from Nancy. All in favor, raise your hand. Unanimous. Thank you very much. Uh, before we get to the yardage, item 5A, was there any movement on the laminated badges or IDs or anything, or is that still in the wishing stage? It's, I, I'll speak for myself, not him. Um, talk to Chief Childress and Investigator Sherwood from the Police Department. I have an ID for when I go out and play, you know, and when I go out and do enforcement. And I was hoping that he would at least be able to get the city of, of appointee something similar. Unfortunately, the PD is only allowed to do those for employees. And since you are appointees rather than employees, they're unable to do that. Now, Matt has been, was going to talk to both Chief Childers and Mr. Hanson, but was unable to during yesterday's staff meeting. So that's on Matt's radar and talk to both of them. So it is, it is still pending. Right. It's still pending. We're trying to come up with an alternative. And open for some ideas. I don't know where the county has made that way or not. Um, the county is just, it's, it's still pending, but they just encourage you all just to stay on the right of way and, and not, you know, go on private property. Um, but we're, we're still reviewing and looking for alternatives. Okay. How can we go through these cases? You have to go on the property. Right. You've got, I always go, and if there's somebody there, introduce myself and tell them who I am. But you've got to go on the property more times than not in order to get a, a view of everything. Yeah, you can't I, just do a drive-by. Sometimes I have to... I know what you're saying, but, you know, just for me, with me being staff for Blount County and zoning administrator, Technically and legally, I'm not allowed to go on private property. I do it, um, but technically, even our animal control officers, I mean, the law is very um, explicit when it comes to going on private property. Even when they have come to us to request a variance? Well, everybody is always yes. so nice. I think it's a very good idea. I think we should push forward. I think that we should be clear when they apply that it says, People will come on your property that they agree. People are going to come on their property to look. And speaking for city only, um, we have meetings with applicants ahead of time, and we sometimes discuss this, but probably more often do not. It just does not come up. I don't think there's any issue with getting the applicants made aware that some folks, uh, the decision makers, may be visiting their property, and so you know, please do not impede them. But I think some of the concern also came from neighbors wondering what the heck was going on and why people were around. Um, that we don't have a whole lot of control over because we don't communicate with the neighbors. But at least we can communicate with the applicants and let them be aware of the approximate time frame when some people with friendly faces and so on will be around. Um, I mean, at a minimum, we can create a like an authorization letter, just identifying who you are, put it on city letterhead, and for more information, you know, call this phone number. We can do that. Um, you know, it's not the best solution, but it's at least a solution temporarily. Um, it, was, it was just a question to see if it was, it was still being worked on or whether it did die. Well, there's been some discussion. Well, I, I do have a question. Um, is that something that, that has to go through? Um, Chief and Detective Shirley, is that something that we can honestly do within our own right? Is that something that we can do collectively as far as our, an identification card? So that's one thing we're looking into, what are the logistics and what permissions are needed for us as our own department to create some type of identification that is not official technically, but might look official enough you know, to get you by. Um, what I would like to do is at least start you know, talking with the applicants. When we revise our application forms in January each year, we're going to add some language to it where they, when they sign the form, they are acknowledging that board members may be visiting the premises. So at least they can't you know, say something to you afterwards. Um, 
But oh, have you all been approached by the property owners or neighbors? Or I get the impression it's been a little bit of both. <laughs> well, that's a curiosity to when you go out there observing, you've got people that are home all day long. And they look and they see a strange car. As long as the car is private, they're going to look. If it's a city property car or what have you, they don't get that much attention. As long as we're not private on automobiles, we need some protection out there. Because I don't want to run into a problem where the police have been called on me because I'm out there doing the city's thing. Right. Well, I've noticed with city vehicles, at least my own observations, they actually look more. I'm just wondering why you're there. <laughs> this afternoon I went and looked at probably eight or nine different sites, and I had people coming out in the driveway going like yeah. this. Yeah. And so I was slowly driving by. Well, what was the situation um, with Isaiah, Isaiah Thomas? And I was out there and I even identified who I was. And, uh, and I don't know, for some odd reason, it, I was taking pictures of the project. They were taking pictures of me. <laughs> <laughs> taking pictures of the project. And then the guy called from, I think, he had a 912 number. And he was like, yeah, I want to know who, who, who was on my property. And because, and, and you know, people might try to steal taking pictures to steal my supplies at night. And I was like, no. And he, he because of the vehicle I was in, he was like, yeah, you a confident or what? And I was like, well, yeah, I was there for, you know, a part of, you know, the zoning board. And I was looking at the property. He said, oh, OK, you know, no problem. Just, you know, they told me a guy was out there taking pictures. And I was like, well, I, I told him who I was, you know. But it's like still. Um, but in saying that, though, I did have another suggestion. We all think about this, is we don't have, have to necessarily have, have a badge. But well, we can't have a name tag. We have a name tag without my name and zoning board. You know, that, I don't even think we can. Yeah, with other words, without a photo ID, but just a name. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think that's, that looks more presentable than not having anything at all. And, um, I, and I don't think we have to go through uh, the chief or anything for that. I, well, I, I didn't envision this as being a in enforcement like you know with my badge kind of thing but more of, of a neck strap that had a little piece of laminated whether it had my picture or not but had my name and that I was zoning board of appeals just something yeah. to look a little less you know like I'm pacing the joint <laughs> <You're right. laughs> I mean, it's, it's been a long time since I was questioned but there have been one case in particular a long time ago, the request was behind the house. And I started down, I pulled up, parked in the driveway, got out and started down in the carport right there. The guy comes out, and I'm sure the carport was full of stuff. I mean, I looked in there, all kinds of stuff. And, Who are you? What are you doing? You think you steal something? And I just smiled and said, good afternoon, sir. I'm Alan Strickland, on board of appeals. You have a case coming up next week, and I'm here if you don't mind to look at it. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Come right on. But, like I say, until you get that first foot in the door or something, they're looking at you cross-eyed and sideways. And honestly, this may not work with neighbors, but if I'm out and I'm on private property, residential property versus, you know, Walmart or Target or something, a lot of times I'll go up to the door, knock, introduce myself at the homeowner's home. Mm -hmm. And generally speaking, they're not, you know, they're not looking at the windows with a gun. Yeah, I would never go on property without pulling up to the door and telling them who I am. And I always take my nuts. And when they see that I've got something with their name on it and their case, that right there tells them who I am and what I'm doing there. Right. And I think that's your card. It may not be your entrance as far as the neighbors are concerned, but this tells that homeowner who you are because you wouldn't have this piece of paper if you weren't who you said you are. I, I do agree with that, um, but my, my I did think about that. The only difference is, is everybody shouldn't be able to view the documents that you have because it's like when it's a, a bunch of people out there, like a lot of employers or workers, I don't want to go around and show them, hey, you know, this is, you know, I just like, you know, I, I usually put the person to contact, mm -hmm. but um, other than that, if, if not that, I just, I would rather have. Like you say, like something, like a little name tag around your neck, or maybe like a little name tag on your shirt. Just something that that you don't really necessarily have to show without trying to show. It just it's, it's there. You know? 
Okay. Uh, the only other thing that I had sort of a question in the back of my mind, we're fixing to be next meeting in November, and every year we get to the December meeting and everybody says, oh, by the way, we're going to do something. <laughs> do y'all want to think about it between now and November, or look at schedules and see if we want to try to do something? It's going to wait until the first week that she said. Let's ask Nancy now, can we have a party at your house, Nancy? <laughs> <laughs> Well, think about it. We'll talk about it in November and see. You know, if, if there's enough interest, we'll try to do it. If there's not, we'll, we'll just be sure everybody's Merry Christmas. We'll make it an agenda item for the November meeting. Well, just, I know you have at least one case. Just, just a note. There's also, you dropped my memory too. Next month will probably be a good idea to start thinking about election of chair and vice chair. We normally do that in November, take nomination, and then vote on in December. That's correct. No. So Trina, you are through you are uh, up until October eleventh of sixteen. Okay. One more year. Anything else, ladies and gentlemen? We stand adjourned. Thank you very much for your time and attention.